Six days of pure magic, human design, Ray Festival 2024. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello there. <sighs> hello, nice. hello, and welcome to Human Design Ray Festival 2024. And today we have a very special guest, a local guest, as this festival is not only online, but also live in Sofia in Bulgaria. And we have a local analyst and teacher and um, many other things. Because Anna, you, it seems like you're forever in human design, isn't it? Let's say from the very beginning. Yeah. Yeah, it would be great. It's a it's first time I meet you what, almost one-on-one -on -one with Veronica here. At this point, we are totally one with Veronica, preparing for this festival every single day for I don't know how many months already. So, so now, yeah. Now you're really almost uh, like one person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you're yeah. so different, actually. It's amazing. You know, Julia is a one-three projector, emotional with um, three channels, three emotional channels. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, I'm like on the other side, uh, generator five one <laughs> left profile <laughs> and uh, open emotional definition. So <laughs> it's we complement each other beautifully. I would say. Yeah. Julia, very interesting. <laughs> chart, I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But also, we are not alone because we have such an amazing um, support from beautiful people from all around the world. Our volunteer team mm -hmm. and our producer Julia Krakova, the second Julia in the team. People are asking us why Veronica and Julia. <laughs> well, Julia yes. uh, Fruchtenbein is our. Um, producer and uh, she's really our backup support backstage <laughs> so here we are uh, with julia pushed to be on the front to actually present you guys because that's the idea of the festival is to make a bridge between the original raw ruhu frequency and uh, the first wave of teachers who actually were impacted directly by ra and their students and uh, bringing these all the way to the end of the uh, age of planning and to the new children. And because now we already have the parents of the children who are going to be born after 2027. And as we know, humanity is uh, undergoing um, evolution. And this evolutionary process can be quite mutative. So, yeah. And... Um, that's what we're trying to bring here. And you're such an important, um, uh, we could say, like aspect into disseminating this knowledge in Bulgaria, actually, because you're really the first Bulgarian teacher and you were my first teacher, uh, Bulgarian teacher. So, wow, it's uh, we're super privileged to um, present you and your amazing topic because... Uh, Hello, we are, this is an individual knowledge, but we're in uh, disseminating in, in the world and being together in couples, in relationships. And what more nicer to um, share this individual perspective of our driver and of our passenger with somebody else uh, in an aware possibly relationship connection ship partnership whatever it's very important what you're highlighting that um, this is an individual knowledge so the human design system is uh, a system that empowers the individual by giving it back its authority and the beauty of this process is that people become more and more themselves and as they become more and more than themselves they face the challenge how can i be in a relationship while keeping my authenticity while staying different and not melding into the other and losing myself. And actually we're stepping into an age where we are actually going to have the chance to experience individual love because for 400 years, the dominant background frequency was producing tribal kind of love, loyal kind of love, love of self-denial, 
where you give yourself, you sacrifice yourself, you sacrifice your own needs for the needs of your community and for the people you're in a relationship with. And now as the mutation kicks in, we can see how relationships are changing and they are changing deeply and provocatively in the sense that as uh, as we are stepping into this new individual cycle, basically we have a chance to experience this individual to individual connection. And there is always the risk. The risk is to connect as parallel lines, as people who are living their separate lives next to each other and they do not bother each other, but they also do not connect. Or we can learn to be in aware partnerships where we can respect and acknowledge the uniqueness of the other and be ourselves with them through honesty. And I think this is the biggest challenge of the of the of this transitional time that we are in. So I just wanted to make the bridge between the individual knowledge and how we can experience individual love as we are in the, invited by the, the sleeping phoenix into the future. Mm. Beautiful. Wow, so beautiful to hear you speaking pure keynoting <laughs> and literally explaining the 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 process that most of humanity really feels lost in uh, something happens but what is it and this keynoting that you are so masterfully bringing together right now it's really has so many layers underneath because uh, when you hear the formula it sounds perfect it sounds beautiful but how do I do that? Yeah, how? It sounds very beautiful, but okay, I'm here individual. Here is my partner. Every day we 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 are missing. We say we are in the same situation when when it's like that. Yeah. So exactly, and that's the whole point because we can muse over the times that we are we are living in. We can reflect on them and contemplate and be all philosophical about it. But we are living in the material world where there are material demands and we are having very real exchanges with our partners living in the same home. And they start from the most banal everyday exchanges like uh, who picks up the kids and uh, where do we go for vacation and how do we choose what to eat for dinner? And the thing is that, that all of these tiny little situations, they are questions, they are chances for us to rely to rely and to come back to our authority and to interact in, a, in an honest way, recognizing how we are different and interacting with respect. And you know, the human design rules are simple. Uh, and Rai used to say that things, it is simple, but it is not easy. So the rules are very simple and they are, once you grasp them, it is, um, for most of the types, it could be even natural to interact according to the rules. For example, like if you are a generator, it is natural to respond. It is something that once you, you, you get a hang of it, it is kind of natural to go with your, with your response, to wait, to be asked and to interact with life in this way. Um, so it is easy. Uh, it is simple, but it is not easy. It is not easy because you have a different human being who is not responding to the thing that you are responding positively to. So that's that's the challenge. And then yeah, then there is the question, there is the chance to learn more about each other through the no, through not having the same response to one and the same thing. Because as the generator finds out more about themselves through response, they can also find out more about their partner through their no or yes. Does this make sense? <laughs> I tend oh, to speak yeah, quite definitely. fast, so I hope I'm, I'm not losing you at some point. <laughs> And that's going to be the topic for your offering, right? Yes, exactly. This is what we're going to explore. We're going to explore on one hand, what are the practical dilemmas, the actual dilemmas that people are facing uh, nowadays in terms of relationship, uh, in terms of relationships. And they didn't start today because the change doesn't happen on a dime. It doesn't happen just the moment we hit 2027 and there is this new era. It has been developing over the past 50 years. So there are trends that could be tracked. And uh, there are new ways of connecting between people, new forms of relationships, new ways, um, for example, monogamy or non-monogamy is negotiated. And people can actually, people face a lot of difficulties with these new formats because of the conditioning of the previous, of the previous um, um, cycle, which has conditioned us to believe that love and relationship and family, they can take only one shape. But these 50 years, these past 50 years, they introduced these new ways of relating, these new ways of connecting. 
and they are a representation of this pattern that we know about the changing the change from one cycle to another their representation of this change so first we're going to take a look at these new forms of connection at these new dilemmas that are represented that are embodied in these new forms of connection uh, because we we do not invent uh, new forms of relating because we have nothing else to do we do it because there are there is a pending issue there is something that is uh, creating discomfort and this is a kind of a solution to the discomfort that we are we're facing and then we're going to take a look at um, what it means to actually be um, authentic, to connect through your uniqueness by respecting and also respecting the uniqueness of another human being. What could be the challenges? And I also would like to zoom in on an aspect of the partnership that usually is um, is looked at as something very positive, the electromag electromagnetic channels. And... Uh, in the beginning, when I see someone who is in the beginning of their process, they come with their partner's chart or with their work partner's chart or with their whoever's chart, and they show it to me and they say, we have nine electromagnetic channels, and they usually count this as a positive. They say, yay, we, I, I get an ego or I get emotions, and I do not realize that what's really going on is conditioning, and it is profound conditioning because we are pulled into something that we are absolutely not. We are either pulled to the gate at, on the other end of the channel or we get a definition and we get a definition experiencing something that we are not equipped to experience on a consistent basis. So we're going to zoom in on the elect electromagnetics and to, we are going to see them as the conditioning that they bring and how risky it can be to get sucked up in this third thing that is formed between the two of us, the aura of the relationship, the third thing that lives through us. So electromagnetics, they contribute a lot to this illusion. Mm. Yeah. And um, it all starts with being yourself and knowing who you are and who you're not simply. So, yes. Yeah. In the relationships is the best way to see where we're pulled out of our natural centerness if i could use exactly and the thing is that uh, it is relatively easy to be yourself on your own you and your plan and the planets you are in a, in a constant dialogue with the planet so you and the planets it's easier because it is impersonal and um, by being away you can stick easier to your nature to your design but the truth comes out the moment you're in an interaction with uh, with anybody other than you uh, there is this saying about um, it is easy to be a sage in the mountain, but uh, it is really hard to be a sage in the in the city. And in a relationship, it's just like this. Oh, it is <laughs> being a sage uh, in with another human being. This is the true mastery because you you're hooked all the time. Your buttons are pushed. You're you're pulled in all sorts of directions, and some of them are really really tempting. <laughs> You know, I feel like mm -hmm. your offering is um, uh, introduction to mine or my offering is actually a practical uh, example of mm -hmm. yours. We can look at it both ways because in the, in the festival, I will be, um, my offering is called seven versus nine. <laughs> and basically I'm going to do it together with my partner who is a great adept of the seven centered practices. Uh, Zen, Buddhism, Hinduism, and he really lives it and he really practices it. So mm -hmm. we're going to take these seven center teachings and, and human design and basically just tell our story, our very personal, very intimate uh, story with all the all the problems or dilemmas or challenges mm -hmm. uh, that we are facing. So, yeah, I feel like there is this connection <laughs> between uh, what both of us are bringing to the festival. Yes, because what you And you're... then Veronica, actually, as well, because she's going to talk about sexuality, so... <laughs> where, where so many <laughs> dilemmas lie. Also a bridge. <laughs> I just want to appreciate that your story is um, very useful because as we step into this new cycle, we are going to step into the sixth line so no information or theory or whatever can be really of value or of influence anymore it will be the personal stories it will be the actual examples and they don't need to be perfect example the examples they just need to be authentic examples 
So there is nothing, nothing more impactful than the actual story of an actual couple and how it dealt with the dilemmas it faced. Mm. Yeah. But also, Anna has such a, a big um, like experience with couples because uh, she's also a psychologist and uh, works mm -hmm. with uh, couples therapies. And um, uh, also, that's her human design niche, if I could say. Like, she's really known for working with couples, uh, also in the Bulgarian human design community. So, um she has a really long um, possibility to observe actual couples and their challenges and mm -hmm. what happens. So that's, the, I'm sure you're also full of uh, personal stories. And actually your teaching style is really practical and nice, exactly because you come up with such nice uh, practical examples. Mm -hmm. So guys, it's not something to miss relationships are a big big topic and uh, Anna brings it so beautifully and I uh, really feel invited and welcome to join us uh, on this journey and also her lecture is actually going to be complemented with the workshop for which you have to sign up because the places are limited and um, you're going to look at actual designs and your partners so you can uh, go really really deep uh, and personal mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and probably this is the, the best chance to actually apply some of the things that we might be discussing in the in the lecture is no, there is no better way than looking into the actual situation of your actual relationship yeah I have a question I, uh, personal because it's always interesting, uh, you know, especially teachers who work for so many years and um, how how did human design meet you or how did you meet human design and how all of that involved? Well, it's a funny story. <laughs> it was my ex-partner who was a 5'1 um, on the cross of masks. And one day, um, actually it was my birthday, uh, it was 2008, he came with a chart, actually two charts, his and mine, and he was uh, trying to to intrigue me with these, with these two charts, and he was telling me, you know, look, there are so many things here, and you know, your numbers are greater than mine, because I'm a 6'2", so he saw the 5'1", and he made the calculation in his head that there is something bigger in this equation. Uh, of course, totally mis misinterpreted the, the whole story. And me being a psychologist at this point, quite skeptical to all sorts of um, mystical knowledge. I said, come on, this is, this is absolute bullshit. Don't, don't bother me with this. I mean, I, I, I don't want to hear about this. A few days later, I received an email from the first organizer of human design events in Bulgaria. And he was inviting me to um, living your design workshop uh, with Patrick. And uh, so I said, okay, enough is enough. Since I'm twice reminded of the system, I'm going to go to check it out to prove to myself that it is complete bullshit. So I went there and by the first break, I was feeling, um, I was feeling quite disturbed. And by lunch break, I was uh, nearly in tears. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I said, well, I'm going to give it a test now, this responding thing. Again, with my natural arrogance at this point. So I went for lunch and uh, I remember having this clear decision in my mind that now I'm going to be choosing by response. And I opened the menu and I was looking at the menu and say, I'm going to select whatever my body responds to. So I read, 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 read the menu and I reached, there was a, a, a melon soup, a soup made of melon. So my body said, mm -hmm. I said, good God, I'm going to stay hungry and probably this is going to be horrible. And I ordered it. I ordered it anyway. And this was the first lunch that I truly enjoyed. <laughs> so this was my turning point, the, the melon soup. And this is how I got involved. I said, well, then I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to see where it's going to take me. And uh, the first part was quite um, bushy and messy. And uh, with a lot of things that I had to kick out of my life because they were incorrect. They were massively incorrect. And I needed to untangle myself from from these things. So it was. It started through crisis. It started through uh, emptying out my life so that there is enough space for the new things to come in. Um, 
and yes, I, I think this is this was uh, the but the pivotal the pivotal point for me was the the melon soup, and this daring to try it just once and to experience it in in my body how different it is to order from here than to order from from my response. Mm. And since then, since then, as Veronica knows, I got involved with uh, um, with translating, with uh, on uh, the seminars, with uh, working on the textbooks, with uh, the amazing translator who did all the work to translate all the textbooks. I was part of the team that was editing the textbooks, um, and uh, and so on. Yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that story. So it, it definitely found you rather than you were looking for it. Certainly, and, I was not looking you, for it. And how do you uh, manage to um, work together with the like, practicing, basically being a psychologist and uh, connecting human design? Do you just look at the chart of your clients and do the classic psychological work or you introduce the knowledge to them? How 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 do you operate with within these two such different modalities? Well, they are different and they are not different because uh, I am the common denominator. So on one hand... Yeah, of course. I mean, different uh, officially, you know, like in the, in the official level, not at the mm -hmm. essential level, of course. It's all yeah. one, yeah. Being pure individual, I tend to ignore the official version of things. And I'm going to go to the essence of it. So uh, there are only very few people that uh, we have started working, uh, doing counseling after they have known uh, their design. They have approached me first to, to get a reading. And then we have started working uh, counseling. And with these people, I have the best results because they develop really deep self-awareness and they move through their challenges much faster. So with them, they already know their design and I can use it as something to refer to during the sessions, but we are still working with their real life issues with whatever is going on, just having this very clear reference. And it really cuts through a lot of um, fog because it goes directly to the, to the core. On the other hand, there are people who are not open to human design, but still just the knowledge, like having this background, this framework, because human design is almost like it is my, uh, my um, the way I see the world, the way I explain the world to myself and the way you know, the principles I have learned through human design, the fundamental underlying principles, they are uh, so ingrained in me at this point that I always interact with people according through this perspective, having this lens. So even with the people that I have started working through uh, purely counseling, uh, I have this lens. I have the lens that whatever works for one might not work from, for another. So I always look for a unique approach. I'm always uh, trying to intuit what could be um, more appropriate to them in terms of what they're giving, uh, showing as patterns. So sometimes it is easy to link the behavior with a pattern that I know from design. So to have a kind of um, a guess. Uh, that sometimes I find out if it is correct. Sometimes I can't because I don't don't always get the chance to see the people's chart. So um, basically, these two approaches are, as I pointed out, I am the common denominator. So it is my mind that that works with both of them. And for me, um, I know that uh, Ray used to say that therapy and psychology is the most not self science, but I think it matters whether it is done by a not self person. So this is my stance on it. That's so interesting because we had recently an interview with uh, Don Elwick, which uh, is a psychotherapist um, for mm -hmm. a very long time uh, before he met human design, I think. Uh, and um, he said that when he met human design, it's just, as you said, like it just gave him such a different lens to everything, which complemented his work on such a deeper level, like to cut through the fog. You said mm -hmm. it so beautifully because you can cut through so much indeed stuff just exactly. by knowing the design of somebody. Exactly. And, you can go straight to the point. Mm, mm. And human design is a great self-knowledge tool and, and can really help people. But um, sometimes it's not enough. We need also other instruments to to really work on specific issues yeah like um that can come up in relationship or in families 
sometimes the information only is not enough um, but it's an amazing instrument exactly and mm -hmm. and the other thing is that human design can only be useful to someone who decides to employ it to use it because you, you might i might know someone's design but if they are not on the they are not in the experiments they are not they are not committed to experimenting with their strategy and authority and uh, facing their not self it's not going to work no amount of knowledge on my end or no and no amount of information uh, that I, I might i might present them with would work it is a personal commitment and because it is a personal commitment i never offer it to people i never go to someone to tell them you know here's this system um it could be very useful to you i only work with human design with people who have already uh been interested in this kind of uh, work with themselves they know their design they want to they are open to this kind of work because it's so personal nobody can do the work for them so my knowledge is not going to help them uh, be more themselves yeah but at the same time it's such a good addition to professionalists in other spheres yes. who can uh, use it as an additional tool um, to for sure for sure for sure yeah, the point because... is that uh... Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say you don't even need to, the client doesn't even need to know their design sometimes, as long as you know how to, like also with teachers or, you know, you don't have to, you know that 90% of the people need to be asked and invited and initiated. So that's already like giving you a, a very big um, understanding of how the world ticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. You want you started to say something. Uh I think it it left because my individual mind doesn't hold it for that long. So it's gone now. Oh. <laughs> okay, sorry. No, it's okay. Well, yeah. Is there something you would like to um I have so many questions that come up to my mind, but um I'll leave um, them to be like um, uh, being born during the festival. Life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> during the festival. Um, because, for instance, something really intrigued me when you said we're coming into the sixth line as a background frequency. And I was like, oh, wow, but you are a sixth line yourself. So you have a different understanding and resonance to those mm -hmm. times. So you will really bring. Uh, a different perspective and also i had those thoughts oh wow she doesn't tell people about human design and i'm five one and like <laughs> you know it's i don't do it like um i did it at the beginning like really talking to everybody about human design but when people ask or come to something which puts the setting about the system i will definitely talk about it so <laughs> Uh, so interesting. Uh, yeah. Here we arrive at our different roles. You as a messenger and me sitting on the roof at this point. It would be ridiculous for the for the fool on the hill to go down the hill and run after people to tell them about something. They need to climb up the hill and ask. And they really need to mean it. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice to see that as dynamic. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, would you like say something maybe about um, the sixth line and the coming times and what you're seeing from up there on the roof? This is the phase you are in right now. Maybe as like final words to the viewers. <laughs> I have a lot of observations in terms of the sixth line, but um, probably what um, what amuses me the most in the past years uh, is the tendency of influencer telling influencers, and it is a very strong tendency, using their life as examples. And usually these are the kind of stories that are, I used to be in the mess and I was struggling with so much and my life was um, so, so difficult. And then there was a key point where I turned my life around and here I am now earning six figures. So it seems like this uh, vibe of the sixth line being an example, <clears throat> it is it is already influencing people as in this period of transition. And, and of course, as every background frequency, it is affecting even, the, even those people who are not sixth lines. So they're trying to be examples, to stand as examples. But the key point, sorry, 
<laughs> the key point about an example is an example doesn't point to themselves. They don't say, see me, I am an example of this. They're just being themselves. So the authenticity of a sixth line and the, the effect a sixth line could have is when they're just being themselves for the sake of it. Not so that someone sees them, not so, so that they create an effect on someone or an impression or be a role model for the others. They're a role model of their of living out their own design. So I, I see mostly the, the not self-expression of this vibe, of this sixth line vibe. And I hope that gradually as we move into the next cycle, we're going to see more of the other people being themselves for themselves, not so that someone sees them and applauds them and um, gets them an earning. Actually, this brings us to a very interesting question about walking your talk or, you know, some teachers can teach, but they themselves in their life um, don't have it. And it doesn't necessarily, I, I would give a, very like maybe a little bit strange example but I'm a dancer and sometimes my teachers who teach me they cannot dance anymore because they're too old mm -hmm. or they can their body doesn't do the movements anymore beautifully it actually it can, it can even look ugly when they do it but they're able just with the words and with the few you know touching of the body correct you so that you look amazing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's for me it's this question like sometimes you don't have to be able to do it yourself uh the master and the teacher uh way in order for to teach somebody um uh, but what you're describing it's a different process it's not the six line process this is a, more of a process that could be for example a first line process someone who has gained expertise someone who has developed to a certain level of mastery. And yes, now he's, he or she is facing the physical limitations, but probably at some point they were good at it. They were doing it. And when it comes to the sixth line, um, after 50, they're not going to be listened to because people are not going to care what these people say. They're going to care what they do. And this is what's going to really matter, that they're living it and they're showing what they, they value or what they stand for. Uh, instead of explaining it, because explaining is no longer quite part of the process. Yeah, and this is exactly where uh, people make e exactly the same. Um, that's what I wanted to point out with this question, that the sixth line is wildly misunderstood, exactly like the way I explained it between the master and the teacher and uh, being a role model. Because being a role model is yeah, not... Exactly. Yeah, being exactly what you said, not being a role model of what things have to be, but just being authentic. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's misinterpreted because there is uh, this phrase, role model can be so slippery. Mm -hmm. Role model can, can trick you into, into being, into presenting something, which is one of the, the greatest challenges for six line beings, trying to look perfect or be perfect uh, on the front and keeping the imperfect hidden, like being a person who has a strong voice for healthy eating, for example, and uh, chewing on potatoes, on chips, <laughs> secretly. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Julia, do you want to say something? And we can bring this to a close. Um I'm just feeling really good, uh, you know, uh, listening to Anna and really receiving that uh, role model um, frequency. Um, I'm very, very, very much looking forward to meeting you in person and uh, hopefully even uh, getting a spot, free spot to go to your <laughs> workshop. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> You're very welcome. And, tr and try to seduce my partner to go to the workshop. <laughs> <laughs> as he's also going to be part of the festival. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, yeah, and just, uh, just thank you for, uh, for joining us and really bringing your uniqueness, your individuality. And uh, it feels good, so thank you. I thank you too. I thank you for the invitation and for giving me this time to speak about something that I'm so passionate about. Yeah, and uh, everybody, 
please feel welcome to share this passion with Anna and uh, find out more about your relationships. You want to come? <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. You're invited. Yeah. Yay. So, so you for now. Live or online. Bye. Bye bye. Get your tickets today. See you soon.